A tracheostomy tube is an artificial airway which bypasses a person's upper airway. The tracheostomy tube is inserted directly into the trachea by a surgically created hole called a stoma. Tracheostomy tubes can be made from several different types of material and can come in various styles. One key feature which differentiates tracheostomy tubes into two distinct groups is the presence or absence of holes in the shaft of the tracheostomy tube. Join me this week as I discuss what the difference is between fenestrated and non-fenestrated tracheostomy tubes. The tracheostomy tube used when a person first receives a tracheostomy tube is a non-fenestrated tracheostomy tube. The tracheostomy tube has a solid shaft. There are no holes in the shaft. When air is breathed in through the tracheostomy tube, it is directed down into the lungs. When a person breathes out, air which passes through the tracheostomy tube is directed out of the tracheostomy tube and into the environment. A fenestrated tracheostomy tube has a small hole or multiple holes in the shaft of the tracheostomy tube. These openings allow for increased airflow up the airway and out the nose and mouth. In order to understand how a fenestrated tracheostomy tube works, it is important to first discuss how a person breathes with a non-fenestrated tracheostomy tube in place. If a person has a balloon-like feature on the tracheostomy tube, this is called a cuff. The cuff can be inflated or deflated. When the cuff on the tracheostomy tube is inflated, air flows in and out of the airway via the tracheostomy tube. This means air does not travel up the airway and through the vocal cords. With the cuff on the tracheostomy tube inflated, a person cannot speak. In order to speak, the cuff must be deflated. This allows air to travel up the airway and through the vocal cords. A tracheostomy tube without a cuff is called a cuffless tracheostomy tube. It functions in the same fashion as a deflated cuff on a tracheostomy tube. Air leaks around the tracheostomy tube and travels up the airway and exits via the nose and mouth. Speech may be produced when air passes through the vocal cords. For more information about cuffed and cuffless tracheostomy tubes, please see the video Cuffed versus Uncuffed Tracheostomy Tubes. What is the difference? A fenestrated tracheostomy tube has a small hole or multiple holes in the shaft of the tracheostomy tube. These openings allow for increased airflow up the airway and out the nose and mouth. This is especially helpful when a person wants to speak. When the cuff on the tracheostomy tube is inflated, fenestrations can allow for some air to pass through the tracheostomy tube and up the airway to allow for speech. When the cuff is deflated or if a cuffless tracheostomy tube is being used, airflow is redirected around the tracheostomy tube as well as through the fenestrations and passes through the upper airway. A fenestrated tracheostomy tube can allow for more air to flow up the airway than non-fenestrated tracheostomy tubes. Many patients are able to breathe and vocalize with non-fenestrated tracheostomy tubes. However, there may be times in which a patient may benefit from using a fenestrated tracheostomy tube. To prepare for decannulation, a cap is placed on the end of the tracheostomy tube. If a patient is unable to manage capping with a non-fenestrated tracheostomy tube, a fenestrated tracheostomy tube may be trialed. A fenestrated tracheostomy tube reduces the work of breathing by allowing air to more freely pass up the trachea and out the nose and mouth. For more information about decannulation, please see the video, Decannulation, Removing the Tracheostomy Tube. A fenestrated tracheostomy tube may also be used when a speaking valve is needed. The holes in the fenestrated tracheostomy tube allow for more air to be pushed up the airway and through the vocal cords. This will help the person produce speech. It is important to make sure the patient has either a cuffless tracheostomy tube or that the cuff is fully deflated prior to using a speaking valve or capping the tracheostomy tube. Do not use a speaking valve or cap when the cuff on the tracheostomy tube is inflated. Even if the tracheostomy tube is fenestrated, the holes in the tracheostomy tube do not allow for sufficient exhalation. This will lead to death. 
The phalanges of the tracheostomy tube have important information on them and should include if the tracheostomy tube is fenestrated. For example, a shyly fenestrated cuffless tracheostomy tube will have the letters C-F-E-N on it. The C is for cuffless, the F-E-N is for fenestrated. Fenestrated tracheostomy tubes may not be properly positioned in the patient's airway. The fenestrations may come in contact with the tracheal wall. This can increase the risk of granulation tissue and compromise the airway. Granulation tissue has also been reported to have grown through the fenestrations. This requires emergency intervention to restore the airway. A fenestrated tracheostomy tube should also not be used following surgery to create the hole in the neck called the tracheostomy. A non-fenestrated tracheostomy tube should be used until the tracheostomy site has healed. When sectioning through a fenestrated tracheostomy tube, it is important to make sure a non-fenestrated inner cannula is in place. This will prevent the suction catheter from passing through the fenestrations and damaging the surrounding tissue. A non-fenestrated inner cannula is usually packaged with the fenestrated tracheostomy tube. Before suctioning, please use the non-fenestrated inner cannula. This will guide the suction catheter into the trachea. Generally, a non-fenestrated tracheostomy tube is used for most patients. Since long-term use of a fenestrated tracheostomy tube can cause complications such as granulation tissue, most medical providers do not recommend using a fenestrated tracheostomy tube for long-term. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.